What's going on guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at the text box widget for custom Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the text box widget, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, you get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube, you get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the text box widget for custom Kinter. And here it is right here. And the text box is just what it sounds. It's a big box that lets you write text. And you can see we've got a little scroll bar thing here. And that's kind of all there is to it. We'll look at a couple of functions for it, deleting things, copying things, pasting things, and uh, all that. And I'll also show you how to customize this, change the look and feel, all the colors and all that stuff. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm calling it ctk underscore textbox.py. It's our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. And let's just come down here and create a text box. I'm gonna call this my underscore text. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter.ctk text box. And we wanna put this in root and that's all we really need for now. Now you'll notice the B in box is not capitalized. A lot of times when we have two words in there, custom Kinter capitalizes the second one, but not for this, it's a lowercase b. So, okay, let's go my underscore text dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20, push down the screen a little bit. And let's just save this and take a look at what we have right out of the box. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore text box dot pi. And when we do, we get this very tiny little text box and we can, you know, type some stuff here. And that's really all we can do. So we hit enter, we still get the scroll bars, but otherwise there's not much going on here. And right out of the box, it looks pretty cool. It's got a nice color scheme. I like how custom Kinter set that all up, but we need to modify this. We need to at least make it bigger. And I also wanna put some buttons underneath here so that we can do things like delete what's at whatever's in there, copy whatever's in there, paste whatever's in there and all that good stuff. So let's do that real quick. Let's just come down here and let's create a frame here. I'm gonna call it my frame. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter.ctk frame. We wanna put it in root and let's go my underscore frame dot hack and let's give this a pad Y of like 10, push down the screen just a little bit. Now let's create some buttons. I'm gonna call the first one delete underscore button. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter.ctk button. We wanna put this in my underscore frame. We want the text to say delete. And let's give this a command of delete, which we don't have yet, but we'll create in just a second. Now we need two more of these buttons. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. And the next one will be the copy button. And the next one after that will be the paste button. And for here, let's have this say copy and let's have this guy say paste. And let's give this a command of copy and let's give this guy a command of paste. So, okay, we've got these three buttons. Now let's put these in the frame. And to do that, we call delete underscore button. And I wanna grid these so that they go side to side. And it's just easier to do that in grid. And we can grid even though we've packed outside of it because we're gridding inside of our frame. Even though we packed the frame, normally you can't pack and grid on the same thing, but these buttons are now children of this frame widget and we can grid in there. So let's go uh, row equals zero, column equals one. And I'm just gonna copy this whole thing and paste it three times, change the column to two and three, or we could say zero, one, two, whichever you wanna do, all the same thing. And this will be the copy button and this will be the paste button. So, okay, now we need these three commands real quick. So let's just come up here and let's create our functions here. And let's define delete. For now, we'll just pass. We also want to define copy. And for now, again, we'll just pass. And then finally, we want to define paste. And again, for now, we'll just pass. So let's just save this and run it, make sure this looks okay. Head back over to our terminal, run this guy again. And these buttons are kind of smushed together, but they look good otherwise. So let's just add a little space here real quick. Uh, we can do that just by going to the middle one and giving it a pad X of like 10 or so. That should space that apart. So 
Okay, now we've got these functions. How do we actually use them? Well, to delete things from a text box, you just call the text box. So this is my text. And then we call the dot delete function. Now we need to pass in what we want to delete. And the text box works on a 0.0, .0 system. So the very first character is 0, 0.0 and the last character is end. So if we only wanted to take the first, you know, 10 characters and delete those, it would be 10.0 to end, right? So it's a range that you want to delete. We want to delete everything in the box. So that's 0, 0.0 to end. So, okay, that looks good to copy. Let's come up here and just create a little variable. I'm just going to call it thing, set it equal to nothing. And then inside of here, let's go global thing. And then let's set thing equal to the thing we want to copy, right? So we want to copy something from my underscore text and we want to dot get whatever's in there. And again, same system. We want from 0, 0.0 to the end of the, the text box. So, okay, that looks good. Now that will be assigned to this thing variable. Since we made it global and assigned it out here, we can pass that now to this paste function if we want. And to paste a thing into a text box, we just call again the text box. So let's go my underscore text dot. And then here we insert. And then we insert from, again, where do we want to insert this? I want to just insert it at the very beginning. Or you could say at the end. And what do we want to insert? The thing. So let's do a little logic. Let's go, uh, if there is a thing, then we want to do this else. Uh, let's grab this. And let's say there is nothing to paste. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. See how badly we screwed that up. Hopefully not too bad here. Let's just click paste. It says there is nothing to paste. Well, now let's try and delete that. Here we go. Let's say my name is John Elder. Now, if I want to copy this and paste it again, it pasted it at the end because that's where we told it to paste it. If we want to delete this and paste it again, we can. And very good. That's all there is to it. Now, there is a lot of functionality in a text box. And I've got lots of videos on regular text boxes in Kinter. You can check the channel and check my Codemy channel. There's a ton of videos over there as well on that. And all of that stuff carries forward to custom Kinter. So I'm not going to go into that. We could spend hours just on the text box. But these are the basics, copy, paste, delete. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it. Now let's customize this. Now this is obviously not great. It's kind of too small. We want to stretch it out. We want to maybe change the color. We want to maybe change the font color, all kinds of different things. We can even change the scroll bar color and the hover of that and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Head back over to our code. And the first obvious thing we can do is change the width to like, what, say 600. And then we can also change the height to say 200. Now our app is 700 by 300. So 600 by 200 should fit nicely. Let's go ahead and save that head back over here. And let's run this guy again. And now our text box stretches nicely looks much more proportionate. All the things still work. And that's cool. Well, what else can we do here? Well, we can set the corner underscore radius. And let's set that to one to begin with. And remember, the more rounded you want it, the higher this number will be. So one will be very angular, very squarish. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over here, run the sky again. And you'll see again, very square. If we want to change this, like I said, to more rounded, you could change this to like, I don't know, 20, something like that. Save that and run it. Now it has a curved sort of corner here. That's the corner radius. Again, the higher the number, the more rounded it becomes. So keep that in mind. It also kind of affects how the scroll bar looks, how rounded it becomes. So also keep that in mind. I'm just going to come back over here and change this back to one. Uh, what else can we do? We can play with border in lots of different ways. So let's change the border underscore width to like 10. All right. So if we save that and run it, we now have this nice 10 pixel border and you'll notice the text is right up shoved up to the end there. We'll keeping that in mind and we'll play with that also in a minute, but we can also change the color of this border. It looks good like that, but you know, you might want to change it up a little bit so we can go border underscore color and you can set that equal to anything blue or you can use your, you know, hex color code. So 003660, whatever, <laughs> just do that because we're always using the words. Let's use the hex color codes for once. 
And so we get a sort of bluish border. Now, remember when I said the, the text is scrunched right up into the corner, we can change that as well. This one's kind of interesting. This is the border underscore spacing. So if we set that to like, I don't know, 20 or something. Now, if we come back and run this guy, you'll notice it's down 20 and over 20 instead of being scrunched right up to the corner. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but you can play around with that in lots of different ways. Well, one way really, just by changing the number. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it back on 10. What else can we do? We can change the foreground color, which again, in my mind, seems like the background color. Foreground is the thing in the four, background is the thing in the back, but Custom Kinder calls most backgrounds foreground, so well, whatever. We can do that, change the foreground color. Now it is silver. And now our text is still white by default, which, you know, isn't great, but we can change that. Hey, let's change the text underscore color to black. And again, you can also use your hex color codes. So save this guy or run it. Now when we type, the text is black. Very cool. Speaking of text, we can always change the font in the traditional way. We can change it to say Helvetica and like size 18, something like that. Make the text nice and big or at least bigger. Save that and run it. And now our text is more easily readable. Very cool. We can change the wrap. This is an interesting one. By default, it is car, short for character. And the wrap is when it gets to the end of the line, what does it do? Does it wrap just the single letter or does it wrap the whole word or does it do no wrap at all? So we can have uh, car default. We can also have word and we can also have none. So, well, let's just run car and see what it is. So I can sort of show you by saying, uh, this is text. And if we copy this and paste it a bunch of times, well, it all fits nicely. Let's go, this is some text on the screen. So if we copy this and paste a bunch of times, so here, some, S-O-M, and then the E is down here. This is I, and the S is down here. That's character wrapping, right? So that's not great, really. You're almost always, I think, gonna wanna change this to Word. So if we do that, come back over here, run this guy again. Now, if we paste in a bunch of things, you'll notice every time the next word gets wrapped over. So instead of an I and an S, just the word S gets wrapped around on the bottom. And you'll notice it goes through for all the words doing that. So that's probably what you want, word wrap. You can also set it to none. If we save this, head back over here, run this guy. And this is stuff, copy, paste. It just goes that way. And you'll notice, boom, now you have a horizontal scroll bar. Interesting. And the scroll bar is nice. You don't have to code that in. With regular Kinter, you have to code in a scroll bar. It's a huge hassle. With custom Kinter, it just pops up when you need it. So that's really, really nice. Uh, speaking of that though, we can activate or deactivate that scroll bar. So let's go activate underscore scroll bar. And we can set that equal to false. By default, it's true, right? You saw it just popped up automatically whenever you needed a scroll bar. But if you don't want that, you could set that off. And when that happens, no scroll bar you have to sort of come to the end, put your cursor there, and then hit the arrow key on your keyboard, which is not great, but there may be some circumstance when you want that. So keep that in mind. That's how you do that. I'm gonna set this to true because I like scroll bars. And let's set this back to Word because, man, come on. Uh, speaking of scroll bars, again, we can change the color of the little button. So we can go scroll bar, underscore button, underscore color, and let's set that equal to um, I don't know, let's use that same 003660 bluish color, right? Go ahead and save that, run this guy. And let's put some stuff here. And now, well, it's kind of hard to say because it's really dark. Maybe I used a different hex color code because these two blues don't look the same. But nonetheless, that is a bluish color. We can also change this hover. When I hover over it, it, turn, it turns to silver. And also 003660, hmm, same color. Weird, I'm gonna change this back to blue. Uh, but anyway, we can change this scroll bar button hover color as well by just changing the scroll bar underscore button underscore hover underscore color. 
And we can set that equal to any old thing we want. So let's go red, something like that. Head back over here, run this guy, put some stuff in. It's bright blue now, but when we hover, boom, it changes red. Very cool, very easy, and that's all there is to it. So that's the scroll bar and custom Kinter. Very cool, very easy to use. Lots of customization, looks pretty good. Of course, this one doesn't look good because I'm bad at colors, but you can make it look better uh, with all the stuff I just showed you. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing's awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book. Enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.